Hello again, everybody. Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in part five of our eight-part series on basic training with Adobe Photoshop Elements, looking at the great tools for enhancing, cleaning up, and improving your photos that are in Photoshop Elements. I've got a very nice photo of a very cute little boy, but the little boy has, if I zoom in by using Control Plus or Command Plus, it has got a little blemish or actually a little cut there on his nose. That's an easy fix there. If you go over here to the toolbar on the left, you'll notice that there is a little band-aid here. This is a spot healing brush. If I select it down here in tool options, you see that there is also, in addition to the spot healing brush, under the same tool button is available a larger healing brush. Functions a little bit differently, but for small spots like this, the spot healing brush is great and fully automatic. All I need to do is just take my little cursor and drag over that spot on his nose. And when I let go, that blemish is gone. Now, if this were a larger area and I were trying to paint over it, you know, it's actually grabbing content from around there and blending it in to get rid of those little marks. If it were a larger spot, you may run into some problems because it's grabbing content and it may grab too much content. Part of his eyebrow or something may have ended up on his nose. But for small spots, look at this, like this little spot here on the sidewalk on the left of him. I can just paint over it. When I let go, it disappears. We got some grass growing up here. Some weeds might not be quite as successful. But there are other tools for grabbing parts of a photo and painting them in. Over here is a clone tool, a clone stamp tool. And if I select that, I can select an area, say for instance, this line on the sidewalk. I want to make the paintbrush or the selection tool a little larger. And I could do that by moving the sliders here on the tool options panel. Or I can just use the bracket open or bracket close buttons on my keyboard. And I like to do that. Bracket close makes it a little bigger. That's what I'd like. And I'm going to take this portion, this little line here, and I'm going to use it to paint over the grass. And I'll do that by holding down the Alt or Option key at the area I want to define right there. Drag just a little bit. That's my selection. And now I come over here and I should be able to, if I can follow up straight line, use that to paint over my grass. Yeah. Now, I did that pretty precisely here. You can hardly tell I did it, right? Uh, you got to make sure that you have everything lined up right in order to make it happen, but you can do some amazing things with the clone tool, and usually it's pretty indistinguishable. Now, if I go back in my picture, you can see I have one object here I don't want in my picture at all, and that's a garbage can in the background. We could use the clone stamp to get rid of it, but if we go to guided edits under the basic category of tools, there is a tool here for object removal. Let's see how well that works. We'll select that. I love to use guided edits when it's available. All I need to do is take a brush or any of the other selection tools and paint over what I want to remove. I'm painting it over and a selection is showing up as red. And there we go. So we've covered up what we want to remove. Again, the program is going to use what it calls content awareness. In other words, it's going to borrow imagery from around that area to fill that area. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes the seams show, but let's see what we got. Let's scroll down the panel and select the option to remove the object. We remove it and it's gone just like that, just like magic. But you can see, I'm going to zoom in here by using control plus and or command plus, and then I'll switch to the hand tool. And I can do that just by holding down the space bar. That's a good way to do it. And I can drag. And there you can see we haven't got a real nice curb here. We got a big dip in the curb. We can use the clone stamp tool again. There's a clone stamp tool right in this guided edit. Select that. We'll try it again. We'll make our paintbrush just a little larger. I'll use Alt and drag across to select this area. And this is what we're going to use to duplicate and paint over. And I should, if I paint this in a straight line, it should make a pretty clean curb. That's pretty good, huh? We'll go Control-0 or Command-0 to widen out to our long shot. We have got a very nicely cleaned up picture. Got rid of some of the blemishes, got rid of some of the weeds in the sidewalk, and even got rid of the trash can. I don't think you could see it unless you were looking for it. That's very nice, and it's one of the tools or one of the sets of tools available here in Photoshop Elements for cleaning up and getting rid of some of the blemishes and bugs in your picture. So if I click Done, takes us back out to the expert workspace. If I select that and you can see that our 
adjusted picture is now an upper layer in my photo and my original photo remains as a background. I can either smash down those layers into a flat picture or I can go back to my original or whatever. Nothing has been destroyed and I can output that as a JPEG, flatten it down as a JPEG or I can save it as a Photoshop file and continue to work on it. Now in part six, we're going to take a look at some of the other cool tools here. We're going to work in Camera Raw, which is a more advanced workspace for working on photographs. We'll talk about that here in part six of our basic training for Photoshop Elements.